Good afternoon. I'm hoping that this recording is working. I just watched your interesting video where you show use of the Coca-Cola plastic barrels for a rainwater collection system. And I, I've heard of other similar people doing similar things. Um, you're in Texas. Um, just to point, I'm in New Zealand and having previously lived at various locations in New Zealand and Australia, um, you refer to the water as being non-potable, and I, I accept that for legal reasons that's the case. But in areas where there is not air pollution to worry about, um, and that might or might not be where you live, um, there's nothing wrong with using rainwater. Uh, certainly in country areas throughout New Zealand and Australia and parts of the Pacific, that's the main source of fresh water, especially for people in country areas. It's certainly an advantage to using and the, the Coca-Cola are plastic containers and plastic barrels are a, a, a certainly great, a great example of that. Um, after they're washed out, even if there was to be a slight taste of Coca-Cola or anything else, at least the water would be safe to drink. It would keep you alive. Whereas, of course, the other thing is if you use some kind of uh, container that's had some kind of uh, industrial chemical in it or something, it might be fine on the garden, but if ever push come to shove and, and there was no, some emergency and your town supply went off and you had to drink it, you might be getting a fatal dose of something. Um, so I just want to tell you, good on you. Um, I, I had a, uh, in Australia, I had an actual a rainwater tank I bought that had been commonly sold to country areas. And actually a lot of people in the cities now, because they don't like to have to go to the supermarket and pay to buy bottled water. But if they're unhappy with their town water supply, well, you might as well just put in a small rainwater tank and even a small apartment or a house in the city, you can have that. Um, I made up a uh, an overflow system for mine. And what I did with my system was I, uh, I arranged it so that it would start to overflow when my system was about 90% full. Now, the, the reason for that was because when it was raining, the water could be going into the to the uh, the rainwater tank much faster than it would be coming out. Uh, the the overflow was only uh, standard garden hose. Was that 12 mil, half inch, something like that. Um, so if I was going away from home for a couple of days and the, and the rainwater tank was already fairly full, I might think, oh yeah, well I'll just leave the overflow turned on. And when a bit of rain comes, the rainwater tank will get to 90% full, get to over 90% full, it'll start going off through the overflow. And I had a big long garden hose, I could run that around the garden onto different plants and move around a bit. If I was at home, um, if, I was, if I was at home at the time it was raining, that was cool. I could leave the overflow turned off and let the water tank get to 100% full capacity. Um, so I see that your video now, it's a, a year or two old now. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what uh, you might have arranged a bit of an overflow system for it by now, but but yeah, I had a system that worked for me, and um, and yes, it did it did mean that uh, well, as I say, I, I made it so that I could it, it would start to automatically bleed off if I wanted it to uh, when it got to about ninety percent full. So in that way, I could just leave it, and um, and that's really all I have to say on the matter, really. Um, uh, I lived in an area that was semi-arid, so not officially desert, but most people would probably consider it that. Um, and even my, I had a water tank that was um, a so-called thousand gallon tank. I calculated at about 900 gallons, but 4,000 four, 4, and something litres. And I, out of, out of my so-called thousand gallon tank, I reckon I probably got about 5,000 gallons a year at out of it. And you'll say, well, how, how do you get 5,000 gallons a year out of a 1,000 gallon tank? Well, of course, keep in mind that you're using a couple of hundred gallons or a few hundred litres, and then there's a little bit of rain, tops it up. Then you use a bit more, and rain tops it up. Use a bit more, and rain tops it up. And um, so, so you can actually get, over the course of a year, more than what is apparently the capacity of your tank. Um, it's It's... You know, if you had a thousand gallon tank and, and the only rain that fell was on January the 1st and then it didn't rain until December the 31st, um, then of course 
you'd only ever get a thousand gallons out of it. But because even in a, in a fairly dry climate, because rain comes and goes, and even in summer, even in areas with a dry summer, you too, still get a wee bit of rain in summer. And and um, yeah, so I got a lot of water, which I used um, like many. Uh, although my place had a city water supply, had a town water supply, although I was in a remote area. Um, I used that for my water um, in the house, including water I didn't boil, um, such as water I had just as a cold water drink out of the fridge in summer. Um, and um, I never had any problems, but I, I do realize different areas, uh, different parts of the world, uh, in some areas there's air pollution and you can't use rainwater for drinking unless you put it through other filtration. But mine just went through a um, a, a, a mesh like a like a tea strainer like a kitchen strainer and a cough's coming on <coughs> so I think that better be all um, thank you very much and good luck with your um, gardening and good luck with your um, living on the land there a little bit uh, uh, salvaging a bit, a bit of rainwater or something and good luck for the um, any other videos you put up so bye bye you have to turn it off. Where's off? Maybe it just goes until the end of time. It's a real mystery, isn't it? Here's a little square.